a month or so ago, I got approval from my landlord to plant some bushes. I wanted to plant something native and could handle my local conditions and grow food for me, people live in my area, and the animals. I found what I thought was a perfect match, black chokeberry, a native fruit producing plant. When I was going to buy it, I saw mention of cultivar cultivars that were developed in Finland, uh, but I assumed that these were still black chokeberry or Aronia melanocarpa. However, after buying and planting them, I started doing more reading and discovered what is often sold as black chokeberry or Aronia melanocarpa is actually a hybrid between Aronia melanocarpa and a mountain ash. See, these plants actually come from the Soviet Union, where they were cultivated all up through and into Siberia. Even the Soviets thought the plant was just Aronia melanocarpa, but an expedition in the U.S. looked at what the native plant varieties looked like, and they discovered that they were actually quite different from what was being grown in the Soviet Union. Now, a quick disclaimer, I'm hardly an expert on topics of plants and genetics, but I found the history of this plant to be interesting, and given it deals with the Soviet Union, it kind of feels like my ballpark. In 1976, Alexei Sikortsov, as part of an expedition, observed the Aronia melanocarpa in the wild and saw the drastic differences in it compared to the plant cultivated in the USSR. This led them to study the variability in the plant globally and within the USSR. The results for this, the plant within the USSR found that the size and mass of fruits collected in different regions of the USR vary insignificantly, where the native plants had huge variances in size. They concluded the cultivated plant in the USR was a new species. This was all published in an article on the differences between the cultivated chokeberry and its wild progenitors in the Bolton of the Central Botanical Garden. This was translated into English by Arenia Cadiz, another article which was produced the following year. Cultivated black fruit at Aronia, place, time, and probable mechanism of formation. This article, alongside Aronia Maturini, uh, Solving a Horticultural Enigma, a master's thesis by Peter J. Leonard, provides the bulk of the information I was able to find out about it. Both these articles more or less have the same theory of how this and other species of Aronia came to be, and it's the one I think is true. The belief in both seems to be that it originates from Ivan Maturin's nursery, Ivan Maturin was a Soviet Luther Burbank. Now, because I assume 0% of you know who Luther Burbank is, he is a very important horticulturalist in the same way Maturin is. Both men created hundreds of new types of plants, and if you've eaten a potato, you've probably eaten the russet Burbank potato, which was created by him. Both men developed new plants to work in different environments and to be resistant to diseases. Where Burbank developed the most popular potato in America, Maturin developed the most popular apple in Russia. Now, there seems to be a little bit more unsureness and whether it is exactly a hybrid in the Soviet document. Granted, I could be misreading a bit due to my lack of science education. The 2011 thesis is much more clear. The testing of the genetics makes them confident that the cultivated Aronia is a cross between Aronia and mountain ash, and probably crossed once and then crossed back with Aronia again. I thought this was interesting, but then I found out that the USSR published an English version of Maturin's notes, and I purchased them. My copy was printed in 1949 in the USSR. Now, due to the timing, it has some propaganda about Lysenko, and Lysenko sucks. Maturin would create over 400 new species of plant, and his notes uh, go over this, and many unfortunately are lost. It's also mentioning, unfortunately, Maturin was critical of some of Mendel's laws, and Lysenko tried to use his prestige to defend his bullshit. Maturin was wrong, of course, and but he didn't go as far as Lysenko in being wrong, nor did he buddy up with Stalin to get lots of people tortured and tossed in gulags for having different theories than him on this. Anyway, in this book, Maturin talks about creating a hybrid between the mountain ash and the Aronia melanocarpa. He calls this liquor naya. And yes, while I'm bad at pronouncing Russian stuff, I'm even worse at hybrid names in Latin, so I'm sticking with what Maturin called them. He says in, this, in his notes, With the object of raising new varieties of sweet mountain ash for the central and northern zones of the RSFSR, and extending the breeding of new, more cultivated varieties far to the north into Siberia, in 1905 I crossed our bitter mountain ash with the mountain Sorberus melanocarpa neyene, which I procured from Germany, and which bears Swedish edible fruit. See, the mountain ash, while being cold hardy, was not considered to be a good source of food, so he was looking for another plant to breed it with. This is what he called Sorbus melanocarpa. Now, Sorbus melanocarpa would probably be Aronia melanocarpa. He uses Sorbus as I don't think Aronia, the Aronia genus existed yet. 
though we can't be exactly sure what he got from Germany. It could have been a hybrid between the red and black chokeberry, and I need to stress the chokeberry part as it's this plant is sometimes confused with choke cherry, which is an entirely different plant. Now I assume Maturin did some further experimentation crossing it back with the Aronia again. See, part of the complexity is that it was never cultivated a ton while Maturin was alive. Cuttings were taken by Mikhail the Savinko to produce clones, though these plants do stay true to seed and can be reliably propagated that way as well. We just don't know what he took cuttings from. It was probably something derived from the liqueur Naya. Maturin did also further experiments on these plants, producing one he called Dessert Naya, which he said is the best tasting. However, this one was crossed with a medlar and the liqueur naya, and none of the paper on the genetic testing suggests that medlar is in there. So we actually probably don't have the better tasting version being grown here. We can also be sure as the fruits of the desert naya are said to be red and not black. So the one we grow in the U.S., often called black chokeberry or aronia melanocarpa, is actually a hybrid produced by Ivan Maturin and cultivated in the USSR, and is probably derived from the Curnaya cross back a few times with the Aronia again. And where this is a somewhat unknown plant in the US, it is cultivated over a huge range of the USSR. You can see in this picture I should have up. Cultivation started in the 30s, but it really only grew big after the 40s. My understanding is used a lot in wine production as well as preserves. I actually have a jar of preserves from Poland. Grapes tend to be a pain to grow in colder climates, where Aronia is not and tends to be very cold hardy. It's also a bush instead of a vine, which makes it less effort to deal with. If you're looking to do what I'm doing and trying to increase local food availability, it might really be a good plant for you to consider, especially if you live in a colder climate. As here in Kansas, things like grapes tend not to do as well, or at least take higher effort. So this has been kind of a huge rabbit hole I fell down by accidentally planting the shrub that I had at the time no idea this whole mystery about it and its connection to the USSR, which is funny given I have so much interest in it. Uh, this is often touched on in academic papers, but most of the nursery sites selling it have no mention of any of this information. So when a ton of these people are growing a Soviet plant and have no idea, and I find that kind of interesting. Also, the better tasting dessert Naya, as far as I can tell, there's no way to get this in the US, or am I really sure the one or two nurseries that seem to have it in Europe are correctly calling it the right thing? And because I found all of this so interesting, I'm actually going to grow a medlar tree and attempt to cross it with my aronia plants and recreate at least a similar plant to what Maturin did. So in 10 to 15 years, maybe I'll have that better tasting plant. M maybe. Well, thank you for watching. I know this video is a... Well, it does deal with Soviet history. The history of one specific plant is a little bit different than what I typically cover. Um, I'm planning on taking a couple weeks off work here soon, which will hopefully give me some time to better finish some of the longer history videos I've been working on. And this should be the last of these really short, quick videos that I make for at least the foreseeable future. At least the next couple of videos are definitely going to hopefully be longer history videos, such as part two of the Bukharin video, as well as a video covering the relationship between the left SRs and Bolsheviks and government. Also, if you're confused where this came about, you should really follow me on Twitter because I've been not shutting up about gardening and growing these aronia bushes for, well, the last couple of weeks.